and welcome to another fantastic show of ESC Fan TV. This is Sweden we're talking about here. This is the country that has won three times in the last 20 years uh, with Charlotte Nielsen, with Lorene, with Man Zemelo, and they are undoubtedly a big player. Now, they're entering with John Ludwig this year uh, with the song Is It Too Late for Love? It's an upbeat gospel number is the way I can describe it. I'll be honest, for me, it is an absolute headbanger. But do you know what? It's not my opinion you're interested in. I think you're going to be interested in the opinions of the panel. I'm going to go straight across to Elliot. Good evening, Elliot. Good evening. So, John Lundvik, is it too late for love? I want to love this song, but I can't. <laughs> and before anyone says anything, it's not because it's Sweden. There is no anti-Sweden vote like Christopher Yorkman claims. That's the biggest load of rubbish I've heard in about 15 years of Eurovision. It's purely that the song and the entire aesthetic of the Swedish entry feels very similar to what they have done the last five years. The only difference is, is that it's a bit more gospel and that's it. Was it the best song in Melody Festivalen? No. Was it the best singer? You could say that because John is a fantastic singer and performer and I'm happy he's going. But similar to Robin Benson, I wanted him to go with the song he submitted the year before. He's gone with a weaker song. Um, I think it's very telling that it came out. He actually wanted to submit Bigger Than Us instead of Too Late For Love. So there's instantly a disconnect for him to this song, it feels like. And again, it takes a good minute 40 until the gospel choir is really going on stage for me to really get into this song. The first minute and a half, I'm just bored. And I don't like the staging, it's too dark. And the lamp thing he had above him just looks like he stood underneath a flickering lamp on the street corner. You could go in singing in the rain for all we know with that. It's, it's anthemic, people love it, but I think people love him more than the song and that's definitely where I stand with it. It's gonna do well, but I don't think it's gonna win. Yeah, I th do you know what? I think they could be altering the staging in Tel Aviv. I mean, I don't know for certain. Um, it's Sweden. They're, they're kind of but, stubborn and this is what you get, isn't it? Like, yeah. when was the last time they changed their staging from Melfast to the final? Well, Charlotte Nielsen's staging changed a little bit between... Uh, but I'm talking <laughs> 11 years ago now. So, you know, <laughs> hmm, OK. Um, now, I know someone who may not necessarily be a fan of the song, but I know he's definitely a fan of the artist, um, is Joe. Good evening, Joe. Hello, how are you, Han? I, okay? I'm very well, lovely. Now, um, say, is it too late for love? I, I should say, is it never too late for love when it comes to you and John Lundvik? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love that guy so much. Um, yeah, I mean, I agree with Elliot. I love last year. Um, I expected him to win last year and to beat Benny and Felix. And I think I underestimated Um the teenage fans out there let's say um but this year I was still expecting him to win I, I just had the feeling you know back in February when they said hi to him then that he's gonna get he was gonna have a really good song and I love the song I love it I absolutely do um I think the staging may change slightly I don't think it'll change a lot I love the idea of the fact that they shine it on him and then the gospel choir come in um I hope that he takes the same singers because they seem to gel. I think you could tell he really gets on with them and they love him. And I think one of the girls, I, I can't remember her name, but I know she actually came um, across in America so she could actually sing with him. So I, I can't see how he will not take her with him. Um, so, you know, I, I just think the whole atmosphere, you know, they'll just click and they'll just gel on stage and it will be a, a really good um, slick Swedish performance and he's got that personality so I think he'll get a lot more public votes than, than Benjamin did last year. Yeah poor Benjamin it was the televote that um, destroyed him last year I think and if my memory serves me correctly it was something like eight televotes or something for Sweden last year. Weird, but I haven't got weirdly figures low. Yeah. <laughs> weirdly came, low. came very 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 um mm. Down, down, down the bottom end, shall we say. Um, now, um, John Lundbeck, he's going to be performing eighth in semi-final two. And we've already discussed on the show many times that semi-final two is looking to be the stronger um, out of both of them. Um, performing before him um, is Leonora for Denmark. Performing after him, um, we've got Kate Miller-Heidke 
um, for Australia. And just to introduce Mitchell into this, good morning, Mitchell. Good morning. Hi, everyone. Now, um, do you think Sweden's placing in that semi-final running order is going to make an impact on um, how John Lundvik actually does in Tel Aviv? Um, no, because when a song is that good, it really doesn't matter what place it could come. Um, I think that it's going to be dominating the night. Yeah, I love this song. I must say the first time I heard it, I this is my first time like full on getting into Melody Festival and um, there were a lot of like, hi, I'm returning. This is my moment to shine. I deserve this. And when I saw the interview, I was like, oh gosh, she seems a little like too produced for me. I'm, I'm going to not like this song. And then when it started, I was like, damn it, I love this song. Um, and, yeah, but then, interestingly, I thought oh, I was, like, hands down the winner. And my brother was there at the time, and he's like, oh, worst song. And I was like, oh, wow, well, clearly I'm, like, on something. I'm just following the song. Um, no, I loved it, and I think it'll do really well. I, I, obviously, it is a really, like, well-manufactured, produced song, but that is Sweden, that, like, in Eurovision. And I think it's really good. Um I, I think they've gone with what is a jury favourite anyway from obviously my body but you last year and they've probably tried to think how can we make this like in the jury and tell a vote and this was the result they came up with. So, yeah. yeah. And I, do you know what? And I think, <laughs> yeah, it, it could do quite well. Um, now I'm going to go across to my co-host, Stuart. Hi, Tom. Hello. Um what are we thinking? Sweden. Are you a fan or not? Yeah, I think this was the best song in Melody Festival. And uh, overall, I think it has the widest appeal. Uh, it's a, a very, very slick production. Uh, he's got a great look. He's got a great voice. Um, don't underestimate this one. It's not a personal favorite of mine. I can't get really get into it. I can't see it as a favorite. It's not in my top five. Um, but he's everything you'd want from a Eurovision performer. He's great. He will engage with the fans. Uh, he will deliver a, a faultless performance in Tel Aviv. Uh, looking forward to seeing him in London on uh, Sunday. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I think it's 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 uh, it's going to do rather well. It'd be top ten for sure. Some are saying it will win. I'm not convinced, but I I think without shadow of a doubt, Sweden will have another very good Eurovision. Oh, I think you're absolutely right with that. Don't forget. In the meantime, like, subscribe comment don't forget also check out those interviews they are fantastic and we'll see you then take care bye <laughs>